Hey guys, Johnny from onestepforward.com and finally today my house is finished. So I want to share with you the house that I've built here in Chiang Mai. Um, if you follow my Instagram, you guys will have been seeing over the last kind of year or two all the construction, all the bills, all the planning decisions and finally I've left Bangkok and I've moved up to Chiang Mai and I want to share the house with you guys. Um, it's quite an emotional thing for me to do to be honest because I know a lot of you guys read my blog and you saw that you know a lot about my upbringing. I grew up with a single parent, we were on welfare, we didn't have money to be going on holiday and these kind of things. And then I moved to Thailand when I was 22, I'm 38 now, so 15, 16 years ago. And I taught English in Chiang Mai, in the north of Thailand where I am now. My salary was five, six hundred dollars a month. And that's when I fell in love with Thailand. And from now, 15 years later, for me to start the blog and, and try to make something of my life to come back, it feels like I've come back full circle and something I'm very proud of. And I also hope that it can showcase to you guys what's possible if you really truly commit to following your dreams. Um, so yeah, then I started making money from my blog, as you guys know, and it does well, but it's not some crazy million dollar per month type YouTube thing, nothing like that. But what I did do over the years is I was very careful with my money. Even when the money was good back in the early days, I was careful and I invested it. And like all the things I do with my every countries and with the seven summits or rowing across the Atlantic and now Everest coming up in April, um, you gotta keep your eyes on the prize. And I knew I wanted to build my dream house. So for me, every time I got, at the end of every month, I would save and invest and save and invest. And 10 years later, it's allowed me to, to build this place in Thailand. So let me show it to you. Right, so here we are. The name of my house is Rosewood Villa. These are rosewood trees. And we are about five minutes or 10 minutes from the airport in Chiang Mai and about 15 minutes from downtown. So really nice. We can hop in the car or on the bike and we're in the city in no time at all. But I had enough space and land that I could build the house that I wanted. So here it is. The land is about 1200 square meters, I think, something like that. And the house is about 650 to 700 square meters, which is about seven and a half thousand square feet. Um, and here it is. We, I literally just moved in. The boxes came from Bangkok from my condo the day before yesterday. So um, it's kind of tidy at the moment, um, which is why I want to do the video today. So let me take you inside. I'm going to show you guys what's going on. And then this is the main entrance into the house. So let's go. And um, I've actually got a special guest with me at the moment. My mum is over in Thailand staying with me, escaping the Irish winters. So uh, she's trying to avoid the camera, but if you see her, say hi. So anyway, this is our room for my mum. I'll show you guys that later, but I want to show you the, the main living area, um, kitchen, dining and all that. So the whole thing was built like a central swimming pool and then like a kind of view built around it. Um, yeah, and it's kind of amazing to think that I've got my own pool and everything, and even though I don't use it half as much as I should, but it's been really cool to be able to jump in there when it gets roasting hot in Thailand, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and then you can see we're gonna go into the master room after, but my wife, Ja, she really had a dream of the curtains automatically opening and then seeing the swimming pool, so that's why we, um, had actually the whole structure of the house is based on that really but come on we go into the the living room and, and dining room area so this is the whole open plan area of the house it's um where we spend most of the time really when we're not working or or anything so i just really you know like when you when you grow up and you see these like fancy houses in Ibiza or Miami or something, I just really always wanted something like white and airy and lots of light and I just want to be able to relax, but also a big space where people can come and, and socialize too. So this is the whole like main body of the house, double height ceilings and open plan living area, dining area and kitchen area. Um, Everything, because I'm in Thailand, so the, the prices of stuff in terms of construction 
and also like custom made furniture everything's just so much better than it is back home so everything like the super sized kitchen table and um, yeah so i always wanted a coffee maker and everything so my missus actually designed this whole area and then we have our, our coffees every morning which is cool uh, the kitchen like i said and then my snazzy over the top fridge where you can see the magic <laughs> yeah it's cool it's one of those lg fridges it's the kind of thing that like after spending so much money in my house like i just thought okay i want to get the fridge that i'm going to get so here it is and i probably never do it but it was worth it so then yeah we have a pantry and a utility room so we can keep all the clutter out of um the rest of the house which has been really nice especially living in a small apartment in bangkok we had stuff everywhere so like now to be able to have stuff all hidden away in storage it's great boring stuff this is like the shared bathroom for everyone who's socializing and then it, we walk into the the master suite which is pretty cool So this is the master suite. Um, ja and I got a, a super king or a super super king wide bed made, so it's so nice. And yeah, this is what my um, missus was dreaming about. So that uh, every morning we have the electric blinds. So then every morning we she opens up the electric blinds and the swimming pool is there. So yeah, it's nice. Although that means that she wakes me up early in the morning too, so not so nice. And then it comes through into um, something that's necessary when you've got a wife like mine, which is the uh, walk-in wardrobe. I get the short side, obviously, and then Ja gets the, the long side. <laughs> But again, it just makes it me able to sleep so much nicer knowing that all your stuff's out of the way. And then the, the master and the walk-in then turns into the, the bathroom, the master bathroom, which is pretty big. Um, his and her sinks, because she's got so much stuff, it doesn't normally look like this. Normally it's full of her stuff, but because of the video, we cleaned it all away. Um, and then across here, you can see that it's got his and, ha his and her showers too, which is nice. Again, like from years of staying in, crappy hotels in South Sudan and Mauritania, I like to be able to have some space when I shower and stuff, so nice. And then, super-sized bathtub as well. Actually, like, when we were sorting out the bathtub, it's a company called Trusol in Thailand, which do luxury bathtubs in Thailand. And I thought we'd be drinking wine and watching movies in here, but I used it more to nurse all my injuries from whatever stupid stuff I've been doing around the world, so. <laughs> but it's been amazing to be able to do that too. And I'm, when no one else is staying, it's just nice that we can open all the windows and open all the doors and, and everything's kind of free. Um, and the only other, there's two more rooms on the bottom floor. There's like a kind of coffee area that for my missus, um, where she can have her sanctuary. I have mine upstairs. And also there's an annex um, that I built for my mum because my mum is getting older and she's got Parkinson's and uh, a lot of you guys will see that I take her on a lot of my trips so now she can have her own space and stuff when she comes to visit me I'll, I'll come and show you guys that now oh the gym let me show you the gym first yeah so we have a, a kind of little private gym I'm climbing Mount Everest in April please God um, and I'm in training now and I'm always doing something stupid so well, I don't need a gym, but it's nice to have the gym. So I, basically I've got no excuses when I should be exercising. So anyway, I've been using it a lot to try to get in shape for this mountain. And a lot of my friends come around and use it, which is cool too. And obviously my missus and my mom and all use it. So it's nice, save some money on gym memberships too. And then we have cool outdoor dining area. So in the north of Thailand, where I am in Chiang Mai, the weather is much nicer than the rest of Thailand really. It's like still warm today. It's like 28, whatever. Um, and then in the winter, as we, it's October now, and for the next four or five months, it's gonna be really lovely, so we can, we can sit outside and, and dine and drink wine. And then we have a cool, like, sunken sofa area. When the boys come over, basically, we, we, we spend a bit of time here. Uh, and then there's, like, a big ice box for, for beers or Cokes or whatever. That's cool. And I'll just show you the annex that my mum has. This, um, if you can see, 
these sun loungers. This is when your wife's got too much time on her hands, so she's designed a little logo for the house. Because her name's Ja. This is a J for Johnny, and this is a J for Ja. So yeah. Happy wife, happy life. So this is the annex. That's the, the master bedroom that we just came from, and then this is kind of like the master guest room. It's the, the, like a self-contained unit for my mom. So it's kind of like a little condo, really. It's like obviously got a double bed and stuff for my mom, but it's also got like a electric hob and sink and ensuite, obviously, and little wardrobe area. Because I know my mum like, doesn't like to feel like a burden, so it's nice that she can have her own, her own space when she comes and not feel like she's burdening us, which she's not anyway, but you know what Irish mums are like, so better she feels comfortable. So she's here at the moment, so we'll go and say hello to her very quickly because she hates the camera. One thing I should say, actually, the TVs, because it's, like, it's quite a big TV and we've got two more upstairs in the fridge. Living in Thailand, people really love new stuff. Actually, it's kind of an Asian thing, whereas I don't know whether it's growing up with my mom or, or our Irish culture or whatever, but we always try to find like something that's been a display model or anything, right? And you get a little discount back in the West, and in Thailand, you don't get a little discount, you get a massive discount. So people hate buying like um, stuff that seconds here. So the price gets dropped like 40%. So there's like a little scratch on the top of this one, there's a little scratch at the bottom of the fridge, and then I get like 40% off everything. So that's why I've got snazzy technology, because it's... Um, display models and stuff. So yeah, this room here is like a kind of conservatory, um, which uh, Ja uses as a, co a coffee room when her friends come around, which is nice. We'd be quick though. Yeah, so it's really like kind of Bali style. It's my mom, how you doing mom? <laughs> okay, it's actually lovely in here, but I don't want to make my mom feel uncomfortable, so we go on. <laughs> so yeah, up to the second floor. This is the first painting Ja and me bought up together 10 years ago. It was the first weekend we ever took away, went away together. It's a place called Ampawa, like a floating market near Bangkok. So we bought that that day and it's still with us 10 years later. So it's nice. Um, so this side of the house is where the guest bedrooms and hopefully future kids are gonna be. Um, it's four bedrooms, the master downstairs, the master suite where my mum is, and then two guest bedrooms. Originally it was five, but I, got, I completely ran out of money. So this area was supposed to be a fifth bedroom. Um, and I was supposed to have a sauna in the uh, gym too, but I ran out of money. So I spoke to my architect and I said, I don't have enough money for the budget. What can I do? And he's like, get rid of the glass room, the coffee room, like which my missus wasn't gonna accept. Get rid of the gym, can't do that. I need it to train. So. He said, we can get rid of one of the bedrooms in the sauna, so that's what we did. And then we had this space above the stairs and I made it into kind of like a library area, which is cool, but an another bedroom would have been nicer. Because the thing about Thailand is, especially if you, if you work online as a blogger or you make money online, you can't get finance. So no mortgage it means you've got to stump everything up. So if you run out of money, you run out of money. There's no way around it. So I had to cut back on some stuff, let's say. So these are the guest areas and hopefully future kid areas. Um, you can come on and see they're quite big bedrooms with uh, ensuite and future proof for kids with uh, working desks and everything, so it's nice. Right now all I got is like drunken friends staying here, but hopefully it'll be kids in the future. And then the ensuite, but kind of boring. Also, that's what is the, like the future female uh, children's room and this will be the boys, I guess. Which again, same thing. You can see they've got like a work desk, wardrobe and, and shower and big double bed and everything. And then, um, this is another reason why I, I ran out of money. When I originally designed it, we didn't have a balcony and then my architect showed a picture with a big wraparound balcony and then I couldn't not have it after he showed me it. So, it let, you can see it more from the front of the house. When you look at the house, the big balcony and the, and the wooden features, it's nice. And it's just nice to have a bit of extra sp space, to be honest. Yeah, so this is my office where I spend half my time. Um, yeah, it's cool. So I have like a secondary 
space for like when I have assistance or, or whatever, or sometimes when Jam and Mrs. is working remotely, she can work from here. And then if you just come over, I'm starting to collect loads of cool stuff. Like this mask is from this artist in Central African Republic. I was just in Central African Republic a few months ago. And this is a gift from a school that we built in Delhi with our Medida Foundation. And this is tiger blood resin, a dragon blood tree resin from Yemen a jug from Damascus, Syria, uh, uh, Arabic coffee, pourer from Baghdad, my ice axe from kayak climbing, Denali and Aconcagua, the highest peaks in South America and uh, North America and then some cool medals from like the North Pole Marathon. I did this uh, cool ultra marathon in the Sahara Desert, 250 kilometers or whatever and like, it's a nice memory of all the pain. <laughs> And then if you just check around the corner, this is um, my future manifestation. So I'm climbing Everest in six months, so I've got a nice big picture of Everest that I stare at every day um, while I'm working to try to visualize being on the top and hopefully succeeding and not dying. So yeah, it's my office. I spend like lot, really a lot of my time in there, obviously. Um, I'm always stressed about whatever I'm trying to do with Everest, for example, or the blog stuff, running these trips, whatever. And the way I decompress is just zone out on Netflix for a couple of hours every evening or, or whatever show, or watching Liverpool. Um, so I've always wanted to have like a little cinema with a big screen. So that's what we did with this room. Um, I've got posters of my favorite movies, Lost in Translation, Old Boy, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then a big 85 inch screen, uh, bean bags and, and a uh, L-shaped sofa, so it's nice for me and Ja or my friends or ever to come around and, and relax in here, it's nice. Uh, yeah, and then the last room is, uh, it was actually supposed to be my man cave, but it, my designer's like, classier than me so it ends up looking a bit classier than a man cave but that was the idea of it anyway um, basically like when we have kids in the future and also just when other people are here like my mom or my missus and if the guys are around and we're drinking and making noise we can come up here and play PlayStation or um, drink whiskey and, and not bother everybody so uh, yeah this is where we relax with the guys if we're not outside um, yeah it's cool and obviously I'm a big Liverpool fan and if uh, any sports fans, maybe you'll know which years, but these are the three biggest trophies that Liverpool have won since I've been like a huge fan. 2005 Champions League final, 18, 19 Champions League and 1920 uh, English Premier League, first title in 30 years. Um, yeah, and then big TV and PlayStation and stuff and all, all the booze. <laughs> and then this op actually opens out onto another balcony for anybody who wants to sunbathe, they can sunbathe here. Um, obviously, like I'm the whitest Irishman ever, so I can't be doing it too much, but it's here for people who want to do it. Um, and then same for this, we have a little cabana area that if, when the weather's nice and, and um, not too hot, you can come out and read out here in the sun, which is cool. And that's kind of it. We can just use these stairs and that opens back down, the gym's on this side and the, and the big bedroom's on that side and that's my whole house. And then the last thing I know you guys are going to ask, well, I've been getting Instagram messages and emails since I started building it. How much did it cost? Uh, the land cost about, at the time, it was about $200,000, the, the plot of land. It was 6 million baht, but the US dollar is really strong now, so maybe 180 or something like that. And then the build itself then cost about uh, 6, 20, 40 let's say 14 million baht, something like that. Um, and then another 2 million baht or so for furnishings and stuff. All in, it was about 22 million baht, which at the time was about 700,000 US dollars, um, which I think is a, like, a pretty good price for a big house like this and like my dream house, basically. I, I've got an investment property in London, which is like, not the same price, but not a million miles away. And it's about 40 square meters, 400 square feet. So I think uh, if you can work online, it's much better to live in Thailand and have a place like this. So it cost about 700 grand. And then before the dollar got strong, it was worth just shy of a million US. So 
from a, from a business perspective, which is what I'm hoping to maybe do in the next year, like I can see why people do real estate. Um, building is a lot better value. I just couldn't have afforded a million dollar house. So now I have it because I build it and I would really recommend other people doing that too, especially if you come to Thailand, let me know. I can point you guys in the right direction, but that's it. Yep, it's my dream. Um, I'm finally here, 10 years of saving and, and struggle and stress. Um, and now hopefully I can slow down a little bit, yeah right, um, and start to try to enjoy what we've built here. So thanks for watching. Um, if anyone's got any questions about living in Thailand, building a house in Thailand, and of course, as always, any stuff about blogging or every country in the world, please, please, please message me. Um, and I'll see you guys in Chiang Mai. Thank you.